What's up guys, I'm Kay Scholl. Welcome to another financial awareness video. Today we're talking all things Roth conversions and everything you need to know going into 2021. My goal for you at the end of watching this video is for you to understand what are Roth conversions, when should you do a Roth conversion, and how much you should convert into a Roth account. With just a little bit of your time and attention and taking some action, you can literally save yourself tens of thousands of dollars in taxes. But don't tap that like button just yet. Wait for me to add some value first, then go ahead and give it a tap. Okay, let's get to work. Hey, quick shout out to Jess Elise for commenting on another video requesting in this one. Thank you for the question and inspiration. If you're watching this and have some financial goals for 2021, please feel welcome to comment down below with any topics you'd like to see a video on. If you haven't read Simon Sinek's book called Start With Why, then go ahead and throw that on your radar because that's where we're going to start why you should consider a Roth conversion in the first place. And then we'll get into the nitty gritty details. So why? Well, there's one overwhelming and glaring reason why, and that would be taxes. Taxes. Taxes? Death and taxes. Yeah, can't really avoid paying taxes, but we can strategize on how to legally reduce your tax liability. If you text five of your friends and ask them if they think the tax brackets will be higher or lower in the next 20 to 30 years, I bet four or five of them will text back that taxes will be higher, which is what I think as well. Bailouts, stimulus, stimulus, student loan forgiveness, massive government spending, the money's got to come from somewhere. Additionally, it's been widely reported and noted by experts that you will only need to live off of 80% of your income during retirement. Hence the common opinion of, I'll be in a smaller tax bracket when I retire. The key word there is need. Sure, you may need to spend less money when you retire, but will you really want to spend less money? Hmm. Hmm. Moving on, if you agree with those friends of yours that taxes will be higher down the road, then follow me on this logic. Let's assume you're married and have a household income of $110,000 and your income drops 20% down to $88,000 during retirement. Wait, hold up. Bad example because you'll still be in the 22% tax bracket in that example. So I won't drop down another tax bracket? Okay, let's assume you're single, making $90,000 a year in the 24% tax bracket. Dropping down 20% of income during retirement would then bring you down to $72,000 and you'd drop from the 24% tax bracket down to the 22% tax bracket. But what if during retirement, the current 22% tax bracket will become the new 25% tax bracket due to the government raising taxes? Will you really pay less in taxes at that point? Food for thought. Okay, last reason why you should consider a Roth conversion. Take a look at this graph. This is 30 years of contributing to either a pre-tax IRA or an after-tax IRA. The rate of return doesn't matter because you can invest in the exact same funds into either account. This first one is just a straightforward assumed 7% growth rate per year. These charts are nice, but let's all agree, you're not going to get a perfect 7% every year. This one is a little more realistic because you can see the ups and downs of previous years. Hypothetically, if you contribute a little over 200,000 and it grows to over 677,000, that's around $471,000 of capital gains and dividends worth of growth. So you simply have to ask yourself, would you rather pay taxes on the seed or the harvest? Hey, if you're getting value from this video, you could let me know by tapping that like button. Would love for you to subscribe as well. No, I am no longer a financial advisor and I do not want to manage your money. I want to teach you how to do it for yourself. I've got my series six, 63 and 65, spent eight years as a financial advisor and usually post financial planning videos each week. What is a Roth conversion? Quite simply, this is when you take some of your investment positions from inside your pre-tax retirement account and move them over into your after-tax Roth account. Inside your pre-tax retirement accounts, your money is growing tax deferred and inside your Roth account, your money is going to grow tax free. When should you do a Roth conversion? Okay, so we just discussed that the majority of your account growth over a 20 to 30 year investing time horizon is gonna come from capital gains and dividends. So when there is a pullback in the market, 
like March of 2020, that is a great time to do a Roth conversion because you'll be able to convert more shares at a lower average sales price from your pre-tax account over into your Roth account. And once it's in your Roth account, as it rebounds and goes back up in value, it's going to grow tax free instead of tax deferred. Another good time to do a Roth conversion is around the end of the calendar year or when you do your taxes. You'll want to consider doing this around the end of the calendar year because by then you should know your total taxable income for the year. The other option of doing it around the time that you will file your tax return is a good time because by then not only will you know your total taxable income, but you'll know your effective tax rate and whether or not you'll actually have to owe more in taxes or if you anticipate getting a refund. If you are planning on getting a refund, then I'd suggest tweaking your return before you file it. I say this because when you do a Roth conversion, it triggers a taxable consequence and you're going to have to pay taxes on whatever the amount is that you convert. That's one of the biggest downsides of doing a Roth conversion. So if you're planning and anticipating getting a refund, maybe consider eroding some or all of your refund to pay for the conversion because that's going to suppress and lower the amount of money you'll have to pay out of pocket to do the conversion. This now leads us to our next point, how much should you convert? Even though I know this topic pretty thoroughly, I still did some YouTube video research to see what other videos are out there about Roth conversions. And it seems like the folks in the FIRE movement have coined this phrase, Roth conversion ladder, and give many examples of basically converting $50,000 from your pre-tax account into your Roth account. The example of $50,000 a year is assuming you want to begin pulling $50,000 a year out of your Roth account starting five years later. Because with Roth IRAs, there is a five-year rule where your contributions are allowed to be taken out penalty and tax-free after they've been seasoned for five years in the account. If you're willing and able to pay out of pocket the taxes on converting $50,000, then more power to you and I applaud you. If you've made it this far through the video, then kudos to you. And if I were you, I would suggest taking a more sniper approach and only converting enough until you're about to jump up to the next tax bracket. What I mean is there is a very small jump from 22% to 24%, but there is a really big jump from 12% to 22 and another big jump from 24% to 32%. Going from 22 to 24 to me isn't that big of a deal, but going from 12 to 22 or 24 to 32 is a pretty big leap in terms of how much in taxes you'll have to pay out of pocket for this conversion. You probably haven't heard of the aggregate rule, have you? What is the aggregate rule? This is when you make too much money to be able to contribute to the Roth IRA and are phased out. And if you make too much money to be able to contribute to a Roth, then you are absolutely phased out from being able to get a tax deduction for your traditional IRA contributions. But there's no income limitations on being allowed to contribute to a traditional IRA, just limitations on being able to deduct the contributions. So people call it a backdoor Roth IRA, which is a real salesy and fancy word for Roth conversion. And you can make after-tax contributions into a pre-tax traditional IRA and convert those dollars to Roth dollars because there are no income limitations on conversion rules. Time out, pay attention because this is where the aggregate rule applies. The aggregate rule applies right here. You have to add up or aggregate all of your account balances within pre-tax non-ERISA retirement accounts, SEPs, SIMPLES, and traditional IRAs. And since most people roll over their old 401ks into traditional pre-tax IRAs, you're gonna wanna pay attention to this. If you've got $75,000 in a pre-tax traditional IRA from a rollover and dump $6,000 of after-tax money into that account, and try to convert all $6,000 of that after-tax contribution into a Roth IRA, you're in for a world of shock because $6,000 divided by $81,000 is only 7.4%, meaning you can only convert 7.4% of your after-tax $6,000 contribution to your Roth without paying taxes on the conversion. 
which is only 444 bucks. Bummer. So if I were you, I would do this while you're still employed and have access to your 401k, which is governed by ERISA, before you leave that job and roll these funds over into an IRA where the aggregate rule would apply. That would then make this a 401k conversion to a Roth 401k. By random chance, if your employer 401k is administered by Vanguard, then it will look something like this, very user-friendly with education regarding Roth conversions, and you could set up automatic conversions or make a one-time conversion. I was simply trying to show you an example of a conversion from pre-tax to after-tax, but inside this 401k, we only make Roth 401k contributions and are still a few months away from being fully vested in employer matches and profit sharing. So this is the screen I landed on, but once we're fully vested, we will be chunking away at the pre-tax dollars and converting them to Roth 401k as we can. Hope you found enough value to go ahead and tap that like button. Hey, if you're ready to take a bigger bite out of your financial planning, check out my retirement planning playlist. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments down below. I appreciate your time. See you in the next one.